a legendary warship lost to the depths. Over 800 sailors left drifting on the open ocean, battling dehydration, exposure to the elements, and hundreds of hungry sharks. The sinking of the USS Indianapolis was one of the worst disasters in naval history. And for over 70 years, the final resting place of the sunken vessel was one of history's greatest mysteries. The USS Indianapolis, a 10,000-ton war machine, flagship of the Fifth Fleet, and a crucial piece of the Navy's efforts in the Pacific theater. She's bombarded the Japanese fortifications at Tarawa, shot down torpedo planes in the Philippine Sea, and supported the Marine landings at Iwo Jima. July 1945. The Indy, under the command of Captain Charles B. McVeigh, is en route to northern Mariana Islands. The ship and its crew have been conscripted for a top secret mission, carrying cargo so classified that it's kept under constant guard. Their mission is a success. The Indy offloads its secret cargo at Tinian Island on July 26th. Two days later, the ship sets sail again en route for the Philippines. The ND is ordered to link up with other naval forces in preparation for Operation Downfall, the planned invasion of the Japanese home islands. If all goes as planned, the war will be over by the winter of 1946. The Indianapolis is a Portland-class heavy cruiser. Ships of its size are not equipped with sonar, meaning it's unable to detect underwater threats. Before embarking from Tinian, Captain McVeigh requests a destroyer escort, a smaller, more maneuverable vessel that can clear a path for the Indy. But McVeigh is told that this sector of the Pacific is quiet and there's nothing to worry about. His request is denied. July 30th, just after midnight. The night is black and visibility is low. The Indy has no chance of spotting the threat that's stalking them. A thousand yards away, hiding in the inky depths of the Pacific, is the I-58, a Japanese submarine. Its skipper, Mochitsuro Hashimoto, is a highly experienced submariner. The I-58 is only his fourth command, but he's been crewing subs since before the war started. He's not going to let such a prized target escape. He orders his crew to fire six Type 95s the fastest and most powerful torpedoes in use by any Navy at the time. Two massive explosions rock the Indy, one amidships and the other at the starboard bow. In an instant, dozens of American sailors are killed. The ship immediately begins taking on water, and the survivors have no choice but to abandon ship. In less than 15 minutes, the USS Indianapolis disappears beneath the waves. Nearly 300 men go down with the vessel. As the sun rises on the next day, over 800 survivors are adrift on the open ocean, 280 miles from land. The men are optimistic at first, but a whole day passes without any sign of rescue. And then another, and then another. Facing extreme heat during the day and cold at night, sailors begin to succumb to exposure, exhaustion, and dehydration. Some get so desperate, they attempt to drink seawater, which only makes them sicker. But any of those fates are preferable to another threat. Sharks. Hundreds of oceanic white tips prey on the defenseless sailors. More attacks means more blood, and more blood means even more sharks. After four days of hell, a Navy plane on a routine patrol spots an oil slick on the ocean surface. Descending to investigate, the pilot is stunned to see hundreds of sailors drifting amongst the waves. He immediately radios for help. Over 800 men went into the water. By the time rescue ships arrive, only 317 come out. It is the largest loss of life from a single ship in Navy history. It is also the largest shark attack on record. But the entire incident is overshadowed when, just a few days later, 
An atomic bomb detonates in the skies over Hiroshima. And three days after that, a second device is detonated over Nagasaki. Both cities are leveled. Hundreds of thousands of Japanese civilians are killed. The Empire of Japan formally surrenders one week later, leading to the cancellation of Operation Downfall. The classified mission that brought the Indianapolis to Tinian Island, their top secret cargo, components used in Little Boy, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The crew of the Indianapolis helped end the war, but tragically, not soon enough to save themselves. The war is over, but the survivors of the USS Indianapolis, as well as the families of the fallen, want answers. Why was the Indy allowed to travel unescorted? How did their failure to arrive in the Philippines go unnoticed? Subsequent investigations uncover that intel regarding Japanese submarine activity in the Philippine Sea was not properly communicated to the Indianapolis's crew. Worse still, two Navy officers were made aware that the Indy was missing in action, but failed to investigate the cruiser's absence or make a formal report to their superiors. As the excitement around the end of the war subsides, the story of the Indy's sinking makes its way into the public consciousness. Outrage ensues. How could the Navy lose so many men so close to the end of the war? Someone had to shoulder the blame. In November 1945, the Indy's captain, Charles B. McVeigh, is court-martialed by the U.S. Navy. Machitsura Hashimoto, the commander of the very sub that sunk the Indianapolis, is called in to testify in McVeigh's defense. He states on the record that, in essence, nothing McVeigh could have done as captain would have saved the Indy. The vessel was doomed as soon as Hashimoto and his crew spotted it. Despite Hashimoto's impassioned defense, McVeigh is convicted. He is the only captain in the history of the U.S. Navy to be court-martialed for losing his vessel in battle. Though it is later overturned, the conviction effectively ruins McVeigh's career. He commits suicide in 1968. The circumstances around the Indianapolis's sinking are clear. But the greater mystery remains. Where exactly is the final resting place of this infamous vessel? The section of the Philippine Sea in which the Indy sank is over three and a half miles deep. In the 1940s, the deepest an ocean exploration vessel had ever descended was only 3,000 feet. But just two decades later, ocean exploration makes a massive leap forward and downward. In the 60s, the Bathyscaphe Trieste shatters all records by descending to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, over 36,000 feet under the ocean's surface. With these technical advances, the wreck of the Indianapolis could finally be reached. But where to search? All of the Indies' charts and logs went down with the ship. The radio man had made note of their precise location while attempting a distress call. But after four days struggling to survive on the open ocean, the exact coordinates were forgotten. The only information left to work with was the ship's original course. Not much to go on. But public interest in the Indianapolis is reignited in the late 90s, driven in large part by an effort to clear Captain McVeigh's service record. Deep sea expeditions are launched in 2001 and 2005 based on the Indy's charted course, but neither are successful. Without a better idea of the Indianapolis's final location, searching for the wreck is like trying to find a needle in 18,000 feet of hay. Finally, in 2016, a breakthrough. A crucial piece of evidence had been overlooked by past investigations. An incident report by Captain McVeigh mentioned that the Indy passed an unidentified naval landing craft, or LST, just a few hours before being torpedoed. If this unknown LST was identified, its logbooks could be used to chart a new, definitive course for the Indianapolis. Dr. Richard Hulver, researcher with the Naval History and Heritage Command, digs into the Naval archives and manages to identify the landing craft as LST-779. Using its precise coordinates and knowing approximately what time the Indianapolis passed the vessel, he is able to map out a new 600-square-mile search area for future expeditions. Re-energized by Dr. Hulver's discovery, a high-tech expedition led by billionaire philanthropist Paul Allen sets out to find the Indianapolis. And on August 19, 2017, 72 years after the Indy sank, 
its wreck is finally spotted on the floor of the Philippine Sea, more than 18,044 feet below the ocean surface, one of the deepest shipwrecks to ever be successfully located. The wreck of the Indianapolis was designated as a war grave. It will remain where it lies, undisturbed, as a monument to the tremendous sacrifice of its crew. Thanks to the combined efforts of naval researchers and deep sea explorers, we can finally close the book on this dark chapter of US military history and on one of history's greatest mysteries.